Hey everybody, Steamboy here. Welcome to part three of the making of the Elon Musk animated pixel portrait. So in this video, I'm gonna go through my whole process in setting up files to export to After Effects from Photoshop and go through my whole After Effects workflow and how I set up my animations to basically recreate what I did in Photoshop. But you know, with After Effects, you get a lot more flexibility in how you layer things, add effects and all that kind of stuff. Um, and with Photoshop, like usually how I like to start is I, I use the, the frame timeline. Um, Photoshop also has a video timeline, um, but that's just basically like a, it's, it's almost like a, a lesser version of what After Effects has to offer. So instead I like to just bring it into After Effects rather than use the video timeline in Photoshop. And just a disclaimer here, I'm definitely not an expert at After Effects. If anything, I'm pretty much a noob. So. Like the way I do things here is just the way that I've learned to do it, um, kind of in an organic way as, as I was exploring. If you guys are you know, well-versed in After Effects and have ideas of how I can even improve my workflow, I'd love to hear some of that in the comments as well. So let's get started. So the most important thing when saving a file in Photoshop that you want to import into After Effects is to make sure your file is as clean as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna do is delete the background layer. That ensures that we get the transparency for each of our layers. And once I do that, I just check the animation again to make sure there weren't any stray pixels that I didn't see with the background in there. And then on the timeline, I wanna choose flatten frames into layers. That'll create a new layer for every single frame. So as you can see on the right on my layers window, it made, every, it made a new layer for every frame. It's called frame one, frame two. Um, so I'm gonna, go ahead and delete all the other layers that I don't need and keep only those new layers that were created. So you wanna double check your animation again, make sure everything's still working and make sure you have only one layer per frame. So that transformation is pretty simple, but then um, you'll see here when I open up the, um, the opening sequence, there's a lot more elements at play here. There's all the robot arms, all the pieces coming in and out. And usually for something that complex, I'd, I'd kind of want to recreate that into After Effects for more control. But here, since I have everything working um, the way I like, I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten everything into separate layers. What you might have noticed though is the, what's missing is the, um, the initial exhaust smoke that comes out of Elon on that first opening. And that's something that I animated later and added in After Effects. And that's an example of something that like, it, to add that into this Photoshop file would be a headache because you're going to be navigating through every single frame. And if you're holding frames at different times, then, you know, you'll have to, you have to juggle that when you're, when you're doing the animation on top. So you can see here, I deleted the background so that when I flatten, um, the transparency, the alpha of, of each of the layers would, would be preserved because what essentially flatten frames into layers does is it takes every layer that is visible during that frame and it flattens it into one layer. And that's why it's important to delete the background layer. Otherwise it'll show up in your newly flattened layers. And you wanna keep these files still open because the video timeline or the frame timeline in Photoshop is gonna serve as your dope sheet or basically your reference to how long each frame needs to hold for. So we're gonna be looking back at the timeline again once we get into After Effects. Okay, so I have my three PSDs here. Um, for each of the sequences, I have the car landing, the Cybertruck landing, I have the Cybertruck uh, transform, and I have the opening animation where his face opens up. So I'm gonna use this for reference um, so I know how long each frame will hold, as you can see in the timeline at the bottom. And then in After Effects, we wanna make a, we wanna make a new project so we wanna import our files, our PSDs. So what's important here is that you import as composition and not as footage. That way it'll make the composition for you with all the layers already in there, as you can see here. So I'm gonna bring up Photoshop for reference on the frames. And then first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down each of the layers to two frames. That'll make it easier to work with. So how I do that is I adjust the work area bar and then I lift work area for the section that I wanna cut out, leaving just two frames left for each layer. Um, I'm gonna go on and turn the visibility on for all the layers so we can see what we're working with. 
you'll see everything stacked on top of each other, like a crazy mess. Then I'm just gonna make sure I have enough time in my composition so that the animation doesn't go over. And the command to make everything in a sequenced order is right clicking the layers, you go to keyframe assistant, sequence layers, that'll put one frame after another so we don't have everything stacked on top. So we go okay. And you'll notice that I actually redid it here because sequence layer actually cares the order in which you select your layers. So I want to select from the bottom to the top. That way it'll put my first frame first and not the other way around. So I overestimated my composition length. So I'm just, I just shortened it a bit here. Um, and I'm scrubbing through to make sure things are working. And next I'm just going to grab that red color from Photoshop so I can recreate that as a layer underneath my animation. Then here I'm just resizing the window a little bit so I can see as much as possible on both Photoshop and After Effects. And I'm just going to go into every single layer and adjust it to the right duration. So as you can see on the timeline, I have certain frames that hold for, you know, two seconds or a second and some that hold for, for less. And I find that, you know, so I work in 30 frames per second on After Effects, but from Photoshop, I usually keep things at a zero second hold. And if I'm holding something for uh, four frames rather than two, I'll make it 0 0.1. So here um, I'm picking two of the frames that I'm holding longer. So that first frame and then the, the second, the other frame that um, it holds on that first open pose. And then I'm just choosing all the frames that have longer holds, all the ones that, that say 0 0.1 seconds. In Photoshop, those are the frames I want to hold for four frames. And the ones that are zero seconds um, are two frames in After Effects. And then every now and then there'll be a frame that gets held for a little bit longer, as you can see here. But overall, it's mostly like the two frames, the four frame holds. Um, so I'm just scrubbing through to make sure uh, mostly everything else is on twos here. Um, you know, there's one frame here where the, the top arm connects to the top of the skull that I think I hold for like a little bit longer right there. Now that I have all my frames held to the right durations, I select all the frames from bottom up, um, right click and sequence the layers again to put them in order based on the new durations for each layer. And once we have everything set up, we can give it a run. So everything's moving as expected just like it did in Photoshop. I think I have one of the frames here that I decided was maybe held a little too long. Yeah, this one right here, it's wanted it to be just a couple frames shorter in duration. So you can kind of fine tune your animation once you have everything sequenced. Give it another run. It's feeling better do is I'm going to pre-compose a bunch of this animation. So pre-composing is basically grouping a chunk of the animation into one layer. Um, that'll help keep your file, you know, uh, manageable. Um, but I'm not going to pre-compose everything because these first few frames here, I'm going to want to adjust the duration separately because, um, you know, just, be, just to have that flexibility for the opening frame and, you know, I want to be able to adjust how long that first hold is for um, because I do want to animate the smoke coming out afterwards. So I select everything else though, press shift control C that'll bring up the pre-composed dialog and give it a name here. And then that will make a new composition with all those layers um, in it. So you can see now I have those first few layers and then I have everything else on that new uh, pre-comp. Um, if you double click on it, it opens it up and you can still see all the frames here. Um, but the, the, the duration of the composition, it used the entire duration. So I just need to crop it here to make it a little bit shorter, trim the crop and then move it back to the right place. And now I have those first few frames separately and then everything else on a pre-composition that makes everything nice and neat. And just for kicks here, you know, I'm just gonna change the color um, of my layers. This just helps me organize things uh, 
it's, it's easier to see at a glance what you're dealing with, especially once you have uh, you know a lot of layers going on in your composition. So once we have that animation sequenced, we're going to do the next one. Uh, this is the the transformation is way less frames, but it's going to be the same thing. Cut everything to a two frame duration first. Lift the area, uh, make everything visible. Uh, select all the layers from bottom to top, and then uh, make sure I have my Photoshop frames visible or my Photoshop timeline for this sequence visible so I can see how long I need to hold. Then I can go back into After Effects and pick those couple of layers, those couple of frames that hold a little bit longer. I usually you know, hold the first frame much longer just so I can have some cropping space. And then I'm gonna just go through all of the frames that are held for four frames. Um, there's a couple here and adjust them to the four frame duration. I have one that's like, I guess eight frames. That's basically 0 0.2 seconds. I'll hold that to eight frames and then a couple more at four frames. It's always nice to have some uh, very varied timing in your animation that keeps things interesting. So things don't just move at a linear, uh, linear pace. Once I have everything adjusted, I'm going to sequence again and put everything in order. Um, give that final frame a lot more running time so I can, you know, crop where I need to and give the sequence a run here. And there it is. That's the transformation recreated. Um, and, you know, as you can see, the background's black here because um, it's transparent. That, that way we can put it back into our other composition where we have the red background. So once we're happy with that, we go back to our main composition and drag and drop the new one that we just made um, into our composition. And you'll see it there. That's the, the tan one. Um, and then we want to make sure we can line it up here. So as you can see on my uh, uh, brain or um, the skull animation, I have a frame where the skull, dis the, the brain disappears. And that's the frame where I want to bring the transformation sequence in. So I need to adjust it to that frame, just that right frame, so that right as that brain disappears in the first sequence, I replace it with the first frame of the transformation sequence. So I'm just going to test here to make sure it's swapping out at the right frame. It looks like it is. And then you can see it seamlessly play from the skull sequence right into the brain transformation. And then I'm basically measuring that last frame so that I can bring in the next sequence, which will be the truck falling to the ground. So I'm doing the same thing here, make my layers visible, trim it to two frames per, per layer. And then go to Photoshop. I think these frames are mostly all on twos. There might be like one frame. That's a four frame hold. Yeah, there's that one right there. Frame eight. The numbering of the frames helps here. So I know exactly which one to hold. And then sequence the layers. That'll put it in order again. Um, and this time, I guess I didn't really bother to... Nope, there you go. Yeah, so give it a couple extra frames at the end. Give it, give it a test run. And then it should be ready to bring into our main composition. So we go back to main comp. And we bring in the, uh, the landing comp here. Got to make your colors match. Um, and then we line it up just to make sure it over it comes in right as the previous animation is ending. Yep, 
Yeah, so I'm just capturing, looking for that final frame, the frame right before the final frame. And there we go. So what I realized here is that I wanted the truck to land a little bit lower to give me a little bit more room to um, have the rocket come out of it. So what I end up doing is instead of going back into Photoshop and reanimating it, I'm just going to move it here in After Effects. And you have to remember when you're moving um, layers in, in uh, After Effects, you want to click the, the little line over here um, because uh, you got to click it twice to, to make it look like a pixel line. That way when you're moving, it doesn't anti-alias your, your image. So I'm just setting every keyframe here to move it down just as much as I want it to so that the truck lands in a spot where I'll have enough room to, to have the rocket come out. And that's pretty much it. So here's a look at the final animation for those first three sequences stitched together in After Effects. Thanks for checking out the video, and I hope that gives you a little bit of insight in how I use After Effects. And again, I'm not you know, a super pro at After Effects, so totally open to hearing everybody's thoughts on different ways that they could approach the same thing. Um, so yeah, leave a comment below, and definitely like and subscribe if you're digging it. And next video, we're gonna be animating smoke. So stay tuned, and see you in the next one.